Okay, global risk and resilience, Abby Joe Review, the correlation between increased globalization and renewed nationalism and tribalization. So tribalism is the unification of groups of people with a common ancestry and it can be indig indigenous but it does not have to be. Nationalism is the attitude that the members of a nation have when they care about their national identity. It's the actions that the members of a nation take when seeking to achieve or sustain self-determination. So let's look at two case studies. The first one is Russia, Ukraine, and Crimea in terms of um, nationalism and tribalization. So the background is under Vladimir Putin, Russia has expressed nationalist sentiments, resentment of the loss of the power and empire um, after the fall of the Soviet Union and everything. Uh, Russia tried to annex parts of Georgia, but had to withdraw, leading to Russia's investment in weapons and troops. So the causes of this geopolitical tension was that Ukraine was important to Russia. It was an avenue to transport gas to Europe. Um, Shell, the ship, the company Shell and ExxonMobil have found natural gas deposits in Ukraine, which was kind of a threat to Russia, um, as that meant that they would have kind of a geopolitical strength over Russia to an extent. So Ukraine wanted to join the EU in 2013, but President Yanukovych decided on relations with Russia instead after Russia kind of um, influencing them. And Russia is an oligopoly of gas. It supplies 30% of Europe's gas, and that will result in more reliance of EU and NATO on Russia as well if they have these large gas um, supply control abilities. And Russia seized a government building of Crimea and also a Malaysia Airlines flight was shot, shot down by a Russian book, book, I don't know how to say it, Russian missile over a Crimean area. So what are the consequences of this conflict? Well, the US and EU have imposed sanctions against Russia. Um, they've excluded Russian banks from the US, such as Bank Russia, used by elites. They've imposed restrictions of technological exports to Russia and travel. Um, such as um, upon Putin's elite, they froze assets of Putin's elite, but they but um, U.S. and EU do still import Russian oil, and Putin can still travel to these countries. However, and also two thirds of Crimeans now kind of resonate with a Russian identity. Okay, now we're going to look at Yemen civil war, and another thing to keep in take into account is the background for these are very simplified and there are obviously lo lots more background and history behind it. Okay, well Yemen's HDI was 0 0.487 in 2015 and it's 160th globally in terms of HDI. There's been a civil war since 2015 in which 50,000 children died in one year. The north has been dependent since 1918, mainly composed of Shiites, 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 um, the British controlled the South from 1937 to 1967, mainly composed of Sunnis. And in 1990, nor the North and South regions emer emerged, and the South was aligned with the Socialist Russia, and the North aligned with the USA. So, kind of these Cold War power influences still existed here. Um, and then, post 2011, which was after the Arab following the Arab Spring, power from President Saleh to President Hadi um, shifted. So now President Hadi is in power, which led to separatist movements of the Houthis uh, and the Sunnis. In, and then in 2014, the Houthis took over Sana, the capital, and then President Hadi fled to Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia supports the Sunnis, whilst Iran supports the Houthis. ISIS and Al-Qaeda also took advantage of the South um, and the U.S. has also been involved in this conflict. Okay, so the causes of it are that people have a loyalty to tribes, of so tribalism, and region over national identity and different um, ideologies since the 20th century, such as the USSR and the U.S. influences exist, and the U.S. also invaded Iraq, and the U.S. supported Saudi Arabia and wanted to get rid of Al-Qaeda and ISIS against Iran, essentially. Um... So that kind of led to this involvement of many other nations in this civil war. Uh, consequences were the criticism of U.S. drone strikes in Yemen, where innocent civilians were killed. Um, Houthis scorched earth policy in which they killed they killed crops on a mass scale. Um, 
proxy war of Saudi Arabia and Iran, and President Hadi needed the U.S. to eliminate Saleh. So it's a very complex war that has involved a lot of different countries as a result of this idea of tribalization, and this pertains more to nationalism.